Hey YouTube, I wanted to just give a little advice to the younger set. Uh, a lot of gyms do this, but you just don't. Uh, you don't see many videos of it. Uh, but I'm saying a lot or not. And uh, one, I want to proceed by this. One of the things that made Jack Dempsey so great and so volatile and, and released that for him to be able to conduct his symphony in the ring was uh, sparring against much bigger, heavier, stronger men that he could unload on more. And uh, it is beyond me why I am seeing guys of the same size and same weight uh, constantly sparring one another. Uh, if you think you're going to be fighting people that are taller than you, for example, you need to be sparring taller guys. Uh, whether they're bigger in, or, or way more or what have you, uh, or way less, because it's going to work you. And, uh, we do a lot of sparring, uh, or have done. We haven't been doing a lot of sparring here lately. But we spar with, uh, I'll take a smaller guy and put him in with Joe and just say, tell the smaller guy, try to unload on Joe. Hit him as hard as you can. Uh, and then I tell Joe, don't hit him back and you move. He moves. And, uh, and when I can come up on a bigger man, I'll, I'll work an agreement out, a gentleman's agreement out, and have Joe spar that guy and try to unload more on him. Uh, maybe not in the face, but with some body punches, because that, uh, when you're against a bigger guy, it's going to build strength. And when, when you're against a smaller guy or a smaller guy in weight, uh, it helps you build defense and speed and so you younger guys go pick a big guy out get a gentleman's agreement with him that he don't beat you half to death and uh, get in there and work him and explain to him that uh, that it'll help him with his speed and you unload on him as you can uh, to the degree that you can, you know, depending upon how hard of a hitter you are. I'm seeing a lot of that lacking today. Um, a lot. I just don't see it a whole lot. Uh, I'm sure a lot of gyms still do that, but, uh, and, and I see some stuff where guys are doing that, but we did that all the time. Uh, I got, I keep saying this religiously, but I put Joe in, had him spar the first two months, not with a guy equal to him, but a Venezuelan professional that just worked him and beat him up. Uh, he wasn't trying to kill him, but uh, Joe would come home at least once a week with a bloody lip or a bloody nose. I got a black eye, a couple of black eyes out of it on the same eye. Uh, I mean, he got manhandled. You, it helps build your strength and it helps build your your character of heart. And uh, I'm not seeing a lot of that. So try that, young guys, and see if it helps you out. Young trainers. Uh, go at it more. Just obviously make sure that nobody's going to beat the crap out of the other guy. Uh, you don't want, uh, you know, a 198-pound man beating the crap out of a 110-pound boy. But 
198 pound man can work with a 110 pound boy and it'll be of benefit to both of them uh, so try some of those things out and see if it helps you and for you guys that are lacking punching power uh, if you're a, at a smaller weight Go get the biggest guy in the gym and say, look, you try to move and I'm going to try to hit you. And when you hit them, you hit them hard because it ain't going to hurt them. And uh, Joe lets these smaller guys hit him as hard as they want. And it helps him to on his defense capabilities and uh, helps them develop punching power. So you got to do things that are mismatched uh, to build strengths see and build speed so that's what we do so we're going to continue to do what we do uh jack dempsey did it and that was where uh that sort of sparring became highlighted for the first time that i'm aware of and uh if it worked in the 19 teens and 1920s it'll work today uh Another thing, I just want to let you guys know, this is how I am. This is how all people that are helping boxers, young men, or teens out. Uh, I told, now, this boy was not paying me. I didn't ask him for no money, nor would I. Uh, we got one guy, he's, there, he's always waiting on us. And I'll be there for him to the end. And if he is ever late, I will chalk it up to something was up and, and I'll let him in. Uh, but with me, if you're one minute late, uh, you come strolling in. If I tell you at three o'clock in the afternoon and your backside just crosses the threshold of the door at 3 p.m., you're late. Uh, you need to be in the gym prior to three o'clock and have whatever gear you need whatever uh you know not come in there at three o'clock to change clothes uh, so that's the way i operate so anyway this kid he really wanted me to train him and i told him i gave him a couple of rules and one rule is be here prior to the allotted time that i gave him and i said if you if you're one minute late, if you're not in here and ready, right at, uh, and it was two o'clock, I said, uh, I'm going to turn you away. And I did. I certainly did. Because what did he come in 16 minutes late, didn't he, Joe? And uh, uh, I turned him away. And he was shocked. And he had a friend with him. Because I told him if he wanted to bring a friend, he could bring a friend. I'm trying to help these guys out, and they're kind of want to be juvenile delinquents, but not that quite that qualified to be that bad. But, uh, boy, they're trying at it, although not succeeding very well. But he said, I was waiting on my friend. And I said, well, uh, you had better not wait on anybody anymore. You know, and that's exactly the way I told him. I said, waiting on him ruined it for you. I said, I said 2 o'clock and I meant 2 o'clock. And I meant be in here and be ready at 2 o'clock. Your ass needs to be waiting on me. Uh, and I'm doing doing you the service here. You're going to be waiting on me. So no exceptions to that. Zero exceptions. And I told people that have worked for me over the years that uh, the only, you know, I look down first day with a guy and do like that and say, you know what, this is my watch. And I'll say, uh, and this is the, my standard thing. You might not be able to have such an amount of control after you get to work with what happens. Uh, but the one thing you can control more than anything is getting to work on time 
So I had a zero tolerance policy, even for that. Even if I was stressed and behind on something and needed somebody, they come strolling in a minute late. Um, and now I would keep that within reason. You, uh, if a guy's on time and uh, at work early every day for months, and then one day he's not, you you work with that fella, but. Uh, somebody that's just started work, uh, no, I wouldn't do that. And uh, I never fired nobody for not being there on time. I don't think I did, not to my memory right now at this moment. But I would, whether I was behind and needed the help desperately or not, they come pulling up one or two minutes after the time, I'd say, you can go home. What? What are you telling? I'm like, yeah, go home. You ain't working and you ain't getting paid today. And it sounds vicious in this easy, easily offended society. It sounds like, oh my God, you are such a bad person. But uh, there are certain things you have to have order to, and you uh, you can you can work with a young person, but you they've got to have that discipline. They've got to have discipline from the moment they, they're they with you. They need to be on time, in there, waiting on you. And for, to the moment that they leave the gym, or at least with me, if, with anything I do, you're going to be there on time, and you're going to give 100% as best you can your attention to me, and you're going to be dead dog serious. I do not put up with laughing or joking. Uh, now there are spots during, during uh, that, that there's a little bit of joking, but uh, not while I'm talking. And if I ain't laughing in on it, it don't happen. It stops, right? So even if I go to the bathroom and there's some laughing, when I come out, it gets awful serious. Just like that. And um, you gotta you gotta carry yourself like that when you're dealing with young men, and uh, everything needs to be very serious and orderly and disciplined and structured. Uh, there's no other way to do anything, or you're gonna produce a punk. You're gonna produce. Somebody that that little ounce, he may be a champion 10 times over, but he, he'll come up on that adversity that he can't handle and he needs that much more and he won't be able to give it. He won't be able to search within himself. Uh, he won't be able to listen to his corner correctly uh, that has his best interest at heart that will help him over that hump. So... Uh, this Marine Corps up in around me, uh, as you should, you come in around me and every day is your first, first day at Paris Island, South Carolina, at, uh, uh, at the, in the Marine Corps, and it continues, it goes on every day, every day, so. Just wanted to say those few things. Uh, Joe's working two a days. We're working at two and six o'clock. Uh, we're getting at the six o'clock. At six o'clock, I have him. He's, we're doing bag work, speed bag work, uh, heavy bag work, uh, shadow boxing, reflex bag work, pad work, all sorts of stuff. Uh, all the calisthenic type stuff uh, we're doing at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, going from about 2 to 2.30 to 4 and then we get home and in between 6 and 6.30 uh, we'll go back and hit it again and uh, but we're, we're running into some problems in, at the 6 or 6.30 spot because the whole damn neighborhood's coming in and wanting to congregate and watch what he's doing. And uh, I'm telling him, boy, you're going to have to 
you know, if you make it in this business, it's going to be like this a lot. But he's like, Dad, we can't, you know, your general rule is don't, we don't show what we do. And we don't, but uh, there ain't nothing I can, can really control with it. In general, when we go into boxing gyms, it's, you know, somebody will be hitting a heavy bag and they'll stop and look at Joe. Uh, but, it, you know, it's boxing. They're boxers and they'll go on about their business. But what's happening now, everybody's stopping to look. Word's spreading and people are going up there. As soon as they hear, hear that speed bag going, a lot of people are starting to come up and look. And they're kind of diverting me. And I'm not a mean guy, so it's not in me to... Say, hey, bug off, you know. So so we got a little bit of <laughs> interferences going on there. Uh, but yeah, I know that's going to settle down. We're new here, and this is a community gym for us uh, in this big, huge gated community here. Uh, swimming pool pump broke on the uh, on the kids swimming pool is working just fine but on the Olympic pool it's uh, boy that water turned quick too that pumps stopped working and that lady that does the pool she really should have closed the pool at the moment that it quit working but you know it was a holiday so a lot of people were over and they kept the pool going now boy I'm going to end up down there having to show them how to clean this pool out because they're going to chlorinate it and get the acid, acidic level up and then combat that with alkaline and go back and forth and it's going to take them forever but I got some tricks to the trade because I got a friend down here that years ago I would I would go stay with uh, he's in another city but he had a hundred room hotel and uh, I would sit and play around with that pool uh, every time and I'd the guy that worked the pool, I'd run him out. The guy that owned the place said, do what he says, because he trusted my judgment and all things. And uh, so uh, I come up with a whole lot of tricks. And back when, I guess I was 13 years old, uh, one summer I worked in an apartment community, and a real old guy showed me how to uh, and taught me uh, some pool maintenance, swimming pool maintenance that summer and I went back several times so I think I worked there the last year that I worked there I believe I was the summer when I was just turned 16 uh, and that old man knew every trick in the book boy uh, so but hopefully we'll get this pool back up the big pool back up and running and Joe will be swimming some laps too but uh, probably do that after uh, bag and technical workout of the evenings uh, for a cool down for him or whatnot. We'll get it fit in there somewhere. We're doing a lot of work around here, Joe, with his school, and uh, he's keeping his grades, I mean, excellent, straight A's across the board, and doing all the uh, training that, that he's doing. And uh, couldn't be more pleased than him. Couldn't, couldn't be more pleased. So uh, much love to everybody. I'm going to end this video with, if you get the knock on the door by the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, first make sure it's him. And when you know it's him, open that door. Because you have no idea the sense of security and peace and serenity that you can get with a relationship with the King of Kings. So, blessings everyone, and I hope everybody has a good day.